Hey everyone, welcome to Liftoff, the channel where we provide SpaceX news and updates and also update you on important developments in the space race. In this episode, we have updates about SpaceX problems with the FAA and the updates about a Hubble station. Please subscribe to our channel. If you enjoy your time with us, please like us and share. SpaceX on hold the Federal Aviation Administration warned Elon Musk's SpaceX in letter two months ago that the company's work on a launch tower for future Starship rocket launches is yet unapproved and will be included in the agency ongoing environmental review of the facility in Boca Chica, Texas. The company is building the tower at its own risk, an FAA spokesman told to CNBC on Wednesday noting that environmental review could recommend taking down the launch tower. The FAA last year began an environmental review of SpaceX's Starship development facility, as Musk's company said it planned to apply for a license to launch the next-generation rocket prototype from Boca Chica. While the FAA completed an environmental assessment of the area in 2014, the review was specific to SpaceX's much smaller Falcon series of rockets. SpaceX has conducted multiple short test flights of Starship prototypes over the past year. However, the company needs the FAA to complete the environmental review and issue a license to take the next step in rocket testing. Company leadership has set ambitious goals for the Starship program, with the President Gwen Shootwell last month saying SpaceX is shooting for July to launch the first orbital spaceflight of its Starship rocket. SpaceX did not immediately respond to CNBC's request for comment on the FAA letter. The company in May revealed its plan for the flight, which would launch from the company's facility in Texas and aim to splash down off the coast of Hawaii. Starship prototype stands at about 160 feet tall, or around the size of 16-story building, and are built of stainless steel, representing the early version of the rocket that Musk unveiled in 2019. The rocket initially launches on a super-heavy booster, which makes up the bottom half of the rocket and stands about 230 feet tall. Together, Starship and Super Heavy will be nearly 400 feet tall when stacked for the launch. SpaceX is developing Starship to launch cargo and people on mission to the Moon and Mars. The FAA letter on May 6 came in response to the SpaceX saying in a prior letter that a launch tower in Boca Chica should not be part of environmental review because the company only intend to use integration tower for production, research, and development purposes and not for FAA licensed or permitted launches. However, SpaceX's project description in administrative draft programmatic environmental assessment provided to the FAA on May 5, 2021, indicate otherwise. FAA Safety Authorization Division Manager Daniel Murray wrote in response. The FAA further emphasized that the 480-foot-tall integration tower is substantially taller than the water tower and lightning tower assessed in 2014. Environmental Review Musk earlier this month shared the photos of work SpaceX had done on both Super Heavy Booster and the launch tower. Holidays in Space Holidays can be a bit rough on the International Space Station. Astronauts are away from friends and family, and sometimes they have to work through holiday as they did this 4th of July, while Americans celebrated on Earth. But holidays can also be fun, and that's clearly what happened on Wednesday, when French astronaut Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency pulled out all stops for his American, Russian, and Japanese crewmates on the space station. During a six-month duty tour on the space station, we get two to three days off, and since 4th of July fell on Sunday, July 14th was the next best choice, Pesquit wrote on the festive French National Day in space. In a series of photos, Pesquit shared a slice of French life abroad the space station, 
as he and six crewmates wore a t-shirt to celebrate friends. He I contributed some French food, flags, and stereotypes. No real croissants, though. Bummer. Although I have a very unique croissant patch, courtesy of the SpaceX instructors. And everyone brought their good spirits to the party. Pesky did seem a bit disappointed. He couldn't have a real croissant in space for the day, but appeared satisfied by a patch given to him by the SpaceX, which launched the French astronaut and three crewmates to the station in April. The International Space Station is currently home to seven space travelers from four different space agencies. In addition to Pesquet of the European Space Agency, Hoshid, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and NASA Kimbroth and MacArthur, the station's Expedition 65 crew, includes Russian cosmonauts Peter Dubrow and Oleg Novitsky of Roscosmos. Hubble is back. The iconic but elderly Hubble Space Telescope appears to have been resurrected again after a shutdown of more than a month following a computer glitch. We have learned that following a switch from the operating payload control computer to a backup device over the past 24 hours, Hubble's operators have re-established communications with all the telescope's instruments and plan to return them to normal operations today. Hubble is back, Tom Brown, head of the Hubble Mission Office, emailed to staff at a Space Telescope Science Institute at 5.56 a.m. I am excited to watch Hubble get back to exploring the universe. The problem started on 13 June, when the payload computer that controls the science instruments and monitors their health spotted an error in communication with the instruments and put them into the safe mode. Hubble's operators initially thought a memory module was a fault, but switching to one of three backup modules produced the same error. Various other devices were investigated and ruled out as the problem when an error persisted. It was eventually decided that the entire Space Instrument Command and Data Handling Unit, of which the payload computer is part, should be switched over from the current operating instruments to the backup. Staff practiced the procedure with the hardware on the ground over the past week, and a full review was carried out to ensure it could be done without harming the telescope in other ways. Shortly before the switch was started yesterday, NASA announced it had identified the power control unit, which is part of the SIC and DH as the source of the problem. The PCU supplies a steady voltage supply to the payload computer, and it was either supplying voltage outside a normal range, or the sensor that detects the voltage was giving an erroneous reading. Because there is spare PCU as part of the SIC and DH, the switch went ahead. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. Please like us and hit the subscribe button so we can notify you when the next episode is available. Until next time, it's bye for now from all of us at Liftoff.